results are in and they reveal that Tamika Isaac Devine won the special election in Senate District 19 in Richland County. Of course, that seat formerly held by the late state Senator John Scott. We are sitting one on one and sitting down with the winner to hear about what is next for Senate District 19 and how she is planning to honor the late Senator Scott's legacy. Welcome to the show, Senator Tamika Ivett Devine. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's great to see you ladies. When you hear that before your name, has it sunk in yet that you have won and that you are making history with this win? Um, it's sinking in. It's not mm -hmm. completely there, um, but I actually just finished uh, the first part of my orientation at the State House. And so walking around, seeing, you know, the, the seat, the office, the parking spot, mm -hmm. <laughs> hearing some of the stuff that's on the agenda, it's, it's really sinking in and it's real. I don't know if you heard Neek on Hot 103.9 this afternoon, but she talked about your win um, and kind of took a step back and talked about the faith walk element of this. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned a speech you gave at a women's empowerment conference where you talked about the disappointment, frustration, um, confusion, all the things, you know, about losing the mayoral race in the city of Columbia. But through challenges, you do learn a lot of lessons. So what lessons, and basically her message was don't give up because mm -hmm. obviously this turn of events would not have been expected and everybody um, still grieving the loss of Senator John Scott, but what lessons about leadership and public service did you learn from that experience that you will take with you into this new role? Mm, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I tell everyone there's a lesson and a blessing in everything. And, you know, certainly I was disappointed when I didn't uh, win the mayoral seat, but I, you know, I know that sometimes we have a plan for ourselves, but God has a different plan sometimes and we just have to have faith in that. And I think uh, for me, the leadership lesson was um, leading in the community and being a public servant was not, and, and being city council person or even potentially mayor was not my identity. My identity mm -hmm. as a public servant was the work I was doing in the community. And I did not allow um, leaving office to, to stop my work in the community. And I really think the last two years of working in the community, being at the state house, lobbying for issues um, such as gun violence and education, uh, being in the community, helping folks who are hurting, uh, living in poverty, that has prepared me for this seat. Uh, and then when this seat became open, although it was a very tragic reason it came open, um, I was prepared because if I was mayor, I, w I wouldn't be senator now. Mm -hmm. And I know that I can do so much more around the issues that I'm passionate about at the state house and I ever could as mayor. So I I'm very, ex I'm accepting of the fact that you have to have faith that you know God has a plan and He's going to use you and use your talents in the best way suited, uh, and that y your service has got to uh, drive what you do. And because I continue to serve, I think that's why. For a special election, very quick turnaround, I was able to garner such uh, support because people continue to see me. They didn't see me go away two, two years ago, you know, look at my wounds. They saw me out in the community working, so they knew that my, my passion was doing the work. That is amazing. A great, a great a, a testimony for sure. Uh, you are now a part of the Senate Sisters, being the fourth woman to hold this title uh, as senator in the South Carolina State House. What does that mean to you? Oh, wow. It's, um, I'm not a stranger to making history, but mm -hmm. this is a really big one because I've worked, I've been on the board of South Carolina Women in Leadership. I've worked for many years about women in leadership and South Carolina has continually ranked very low when it, when it relates to women in elected or appointed office. And so now to become the sixth female senator, um, and both of you all can appreciate this as being part of the D9, mm -hmm. my line number is six. So oh, I'm, nice. <laughs> so yeah. it's just like, to me, it's like I'm there, the sixth female senator. I've elevated our state's um, position as it, as it relates to women in elected office, although we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, it's elevated it, but it also gives me an opportunity to share um, that women, we lead differently and we deserve to be at these tables where uh, policies are being made, especially when it relates to our families. So I'm excited to be able to be there. And I misspoke, there are six instead of four, yeah. so thank you for <laughs> clarifying that. Um, earlier this year, I had an opportunity to interview uh, Ambassador Andrew Young. And he had a great quote, I think I shared it with you, Billy, mm -hmm. where you know, I asked him about voter apathy. He says, there's no such thing as voter apathy, which kind of caught me off guard. He said, Judy, there's no voter apathy. He says, when people have something to vote for, they show up. Mm -hmm. So looking at the turnout for this special election, and I know it was right after the first of the year, right after the holidays, yeah. unexpected circumstances, but 70,000 registered voters and fewer than 5% showed up at the polls. 
as you are sworn in next week and take this office and then have to run for the full term, what is it that you're going to give voters to vote for to show up at the polls? Well, I think we have got to do a better job at relating what happens at the state house to our everyday lives, our bread, bread and butter issues. You know, we just bring in the new year. There were a lot of states that increased their minimum wage. Uh, and there are a lot of folks who are working two and three jobs to make ends meet. We have to, un we need to make sure people understand what our state house does, how our senators can affect whether or not what they get paid. We have to um, make sure that we're connecting, you know, the education that their children is getting and, and what our state senators are doing. So many folks will complain about an issue, but they don't even know who to complain to. And mm -hmm. so my role over the next, you know, several months and continuing into a next election is connecting the dots with these issues. What's happening at the state house every single day and how it relates to what's happening in the communities so that people know it is not only important it's imperative that we participate in the process because you know we get what we get because we're, we're not at the table and that uh, leads me into my next question how can your constituents con contact you with any concerns or issues in district 19 well <laughs> it's never been that hard to contact me mm -hmm. I'm always out and about but I always say I meet people where they are so you know I'm on uh, on social media I, my, my personal cell is what I give everybody when I'm at community meetings you know my office is listed so you know any and every way that's a, a uh, comfortable to the person you know I've got you know young younger um, older younger ladies who mm -hmm. uh, will not email but they will call me and they right. expect me to answer and yeah. so I want people to reach out to me in any way that they feel comfortable I'm going to answer and if I don't have an answer I'm going to find it for you and I'm going to get back to you on it well we thank you for your time today for joining us on the heels of the election victory and the swearing in is set mm -hmm. for it is set for Monday at four o'clock at the okay. State House. All, right. All right, Monday at four o'clock. You heard it first here on WS News Ten. Congratulations to Senator Elect Tamika Isaac Devine. Thank we'll you. be following up with you on those important issues at the State House. Congratulations. We'll be right back after this quick break.